Hello, Salaja here. In this episode, we're going to begin building the ALU. The first step is to build two muxes that are able to take uh, two of these signals and send them to the ALU. Now, the reason we're using muxes is because it allows us to select what each of the outputs will be. We could choose this uh, this register and this register, or this register and a different register, or any combination, or even the same register twice. So the muxes we're going to build are going to be very, very similar to what we built over here to select which register we're writing to. So I'm going to do that now. So I've just finished building two decoders. Now, in this case, the dark output will be the active register. If I come over here, these are the two um, inputs. So th this will control the index of which register we're looking at. So 00, zero will be the first one. Zero 01 will be the second one. 10 will be the third. And 11 one one will be the last one. The second one's exactly the same there. Uh, these four lines here will be connected to these four middle lines here because um, the first two are going to be the opcode to tell it to add. The next two are going to be the first index or the first the location of the register to add. The next two are the second location of the second register to add. And the last two is the location of the register we're going to save the result. So, for example, the um, first two coordinates might indicate this register, the next two might indicate this one, and the next two might indicate to save the result here. So, the next part in this is to build on our decoders here and turn it into a MUX. So, it's basically connecting up this um, on signal to a bunch of AND gates which um, will allow one set of or allow all the signals in one register onto a bus. I'll do that now. Okay, I've finished the first MUX so I'll just give a quick demonstration of what it can do. Uh, the first register you can see it holds uh, 1 0 0 0 the second register holds 1100, zero, zero. the third one is 1110, one, one, and the fourth one is all ones. So, if I come over here, um, these four torches here are the output of the bus. So you can see if I'm looking at the first register, which I, where the uh, only the bottom one is a one, you can see the bus outputs are one only on the bottom. If I look now at the second register, we've got two, if I look at the third register, we've got the three. <clears throat> and if we look at the fourth register, we've got all four. Now, um, these coordinates aren't creating these four torches on. They're creating a reference, or they're feeding through the signal from the register. So when I'm looking at the fourth one here, it's basically taking the values that are present coming out of this register here, this 4-bit register, and it puts it onto the bus and it comes out here. So all I have to do is do that to a second one. So we've got two um, muxes there and connect those lines up to the uh, inputs there. So you can see here I've made the second MUX, I've also extended the buses down a little bit, and I've connected the inputs to the um, main instruction bus. So you can see here, currently, uh, whichever instruction it's on has uh, all reds over the middle four, so that's indicating the fourth uh, register on both. So you can see here that this dark tower and this dark tower indicates that the fourth one is being read from both, which is why uh,
both of the buses coming out of here are all red. If I were to uh, change it such that uh, one was dark dark or the first one, I'd expect one of them to have only one red, and that's what we see here. So uh, this one, the second one is still connected to register 4, but um, the first one is now connected to register 1, which uh, only holds one Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extend these buses a little bit more <clears throat> and I'm going to build a 4-bit ripple carry adder uh, off to the side so um, as well as an op-amp trigger to send the signal. Um, I'll do that now. Okay, this is the ripple carry adder I'm going to be using. It's just a simple adder, like um, 6 plus 2 equals 8, so 0, 0, 0, 1. Um, that's about it. I'll hook it up now. Alright, I've connected the buses to the adder. The four inputs to the adder here are connected to the second bus and the four inputs on this side are connected to the first bus. The output of the adder is here. At the moment it's got 15 and 15 being added together which overflows to create 14. This is this line uh, checks to see if the opcode indicates uh, addition which is 1, 0. At the moment it's zero, 1, so it's red. If I turn it off... So it'll go dark if the opcode is um, zero, 1. So you can see here that um, 1, 1, 1, 0 passes through onto this uh, return bus and we get 1, 1, 1, 0. The purpose of this uh, adder uh, this think line to detect whether it's adding or not is that if it's not adding, this line goes red. It um, makes all these red, and like I've done before, where I've got a signal, I invert it, then invert it again. So this stretch here is inverted. So I force it high, which forces the signal low, which means nothing is actually put onto the return bus. So when we're not doing addition, we're not returning anything from the adder. If I uh, modify the results here, okay, so we've got 3 plus 3. You can see uh, this bit here it equals 6, and nothing is put onto the uh, onto the return bus unless we tell it it's doing addition. In which case, the number 6 is put on the return bus. So yeah, and uh, 6 is 0, 1, 1, 0. So, what I've got to do now is connect this return bus to the uh, right input. When I say right, I mean that's with a uh, W to write information to one of the registers and um, add the addition opcode here to trigger it to write. Because at the moment, only the load opcode is telling it to write. I've got to adjust it so that if it detects. Um, addition then it should instruct it to write as well. Okay, I've made a few changes from what I was going to do. Instead of having, instead of detecting for multiple different opcodes and writing or whatnot based on those, I decided just to write whenever it's not branching so that's uh, one one it detects there so it's searching for branching but um, I've designed it so that whenever it does detect branching it will not write and whenever it doesn't detect branching it will it's the same sort of thing as uh, it's functionally the same as doing it the other way I did a similar sort of thing with uh, this one except this one searches for a loading 
Now, a few, episode, a few episodes ago, you may have remembered I built this thing here, and I said it would be useful later on. Well, its job is to block all the signals coming from all the uh, the four bits from the main bus that would be loaded onto loaded into a register. So it can block those, and it's got a sort of pair here, and this is coming from the ALU. So it's sort of it's basically a mux. It selects either four bits coming from the ALU, which is the result of an equation or it takes four bits out of the uh, bus to load into a register. And based on whether the opcode is load, uh, if it's load, it'll allow these bits through and it'll be put onto a register. If it's not load, then the bits will be taken from the ALU and wrote, written to a register. It's all functionally the same. Um, oh yes. One other thing I did, I modified the clock because um, adding with ripple carry takes a while. I just decided to use a big clock, so it's got enough time to reach uh, steady state. One other change I made: this is the clock signal that activates, or that lets it not to that tells it when to write. Instead of just having a, a low clock signal indicate write. I had it I changed it so that it would send a sort of low signal pulse whenever it goes low. It's because if the clock has a low signal for half its time, that's a long time for it to be writing and sometimes and what would happen is uh if we're adding this register if we're adding two registers and saving to one register, the value would come through update the register um, and it would sort of feed back. So by having it at a, at a so making it a pulse means it'll write very quickly and um, that'll be that. So that just makes it a bit more um, accurate I suppose. Now I've written a simple program uh, this line got opcode 01 so it'll load uh, it'll load the value of 1, so that's 0, 0, 0, 1, to register 0. The next line, will it'll load as well, except it'll load 0, 0, 0, 0 into the third register. The third line will uh, add, so 1, 0 is add, and it will add register 0 with register 3, and save the result to register 3. And the fourth line, uh, it just branches back to this third line. So what this is, or what it should do, is it'll write 1 to this register, it'll write 0 to this register, and then it will add this register to this one and keep doing that. So this register should go from 0 one, two, three, and so on and so forth, and it'll count up to 15 and loop over. So I'll just turn it on now. So first it writes zero there, oh, I mean, writes one to that register, then it writes zero to this register. Okay, so it just wrote zero there, so there's nothing in there, and now it should um, incrementally add one. So we're looking at these bits here. So it's now 1. Two. Three. And it'll keep doing that up to 15. Well, that's uh, a start on the ALU. Uh, it's only got one function at the moment, and that's addition. Adding more functions, uh, well, we've only got the opcode for one more function. But if we add another function, it would simply be a matter of tacking it on the end there. So it's 
this is a fairly modular design you can add functions um, if you want more than one more function then you'll need an extra line of uh, opcode to handle the uh, so it's got a so there are available instructions or ways to uh, tell operations apart from one another um, but that about concludes this uh, episode. Thank you very much for watching.